முடக்கம் பிளானிங் த மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ஃபார் அ பேஷண்ட் வித் அன் ஆம்பியூட்டேட் தம் இஸ் ப்ரிட்டி சேலஞ்சிங் இட் ஹேஸ் மெனி ஃபெசட்ஸ் டு இட் லைக் ஃபார் இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் வாட் இஸ் த லெவல் ஆஃப் த ஆம்பியூட்டேஷன் ஹியர் how do we clinically evaluate this problem so that we can make a correct plan how do we plan the management protocol in reconstruction of this thumb is microsurgery absolutely essential for the reconstruction of this thumb how do we communicate the plans that we have made and how do we discuss with the patient and the attenders regarding the reconstruction of this thumb after deciding on the management how do we seamlessly schedule the events in the management protocol we shall see all these and more in this video on reconstruction of an amputated thumb the very first episode in the new series clinics at gk hand surgery is going to be a discussion on a patient with an amputated thumb This kind of case though rare deserves a complete discussion the format of discussion which will be used in all the episodes of clinics at gk hand surgery will be used in this episode also that is first there will be a section on case details and examination next will be the segment on planning the management of this particular case then will be talking to the patient and caregivers and finally scheduling the management the first thing we need to do when the patient presents to us for a consultation is to make him or her comfortable and also make the primary caregiver comfortable we also need to understand the mental makeup of the patient and whether he is able to understand what we are trying to explain this 12 year old boy has presented with the complaints of inability to use the right thumb since 4 months he is accompanied by his mother who is supplying the details of the problem the mother appears motivated and at the same time listening carefully to what i have to say the young patient is quiet but seems to understand what he has been brought here for this boy apparently had an electrical burns 4 months back when he tried to free a kite stuck in the high tension lines with an iron rod he sustained burns on the right hand only and no obvious exit wounds on the feet or anywhere else in the body he was taken to a nearby clinic where he was advised to go to a bigger hospital he was taken to another hospital where primary treatment was provided and dressings were done four days later he was told that there was a raw area on the index finger which was debrided and an rdma flap cover was done from the dorsal aspect of the index finger after one week he was told that the thumb was gangrenous it was removed and a groin flap was used to resurface the thumb now the patient has come seeking thumb reconstruction he is a right hand dominant individual using the left hand now for supportive activity on examination of the right hand there is a hyperpigmented patch of soft supple skin over the metacarpal region of the thumb this is most probably the flap that had been provided from the groin region it is soft and supple and a little bulky the thumb is shortened and there are movements of abduction adduction at the carpometacarpal joint but there are no obvious metacarpophalangeal joint movements there is no nail complex remaining on the thumb the donor site of the groin flap is well healed there is another flap of skin of about 2 cm diameter on the ulnar side of the right index finger at the middle phalanx terminal phalangeal region where the rdma flap had been done the donor site of the rdma flap which is around 4.5 by 3.5 cm had been grafted and has healed well and the scar is seen over the metacarpophalangeal joint of the index finger which is hyperpigmented but soft and supple there is full passive and active range of movement at the metacarpophalangeal joint and the interphalangeal joints of the index the movements at the middle ring and little fingers are also full and free plain x-ray of the right thumb shows the presence of the thumb only up to the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint the soft tissue shadow of the bulky flap is seen there is a minimal deformity of the head or and neck of the first metacarpal bone the carpometacarpal joint looks intact and there are no signs of articular damage 
there is no other sign of joint involvement in the index finger. Summarizing, we have here a 12 year old right hand individual with a loss of right thumb at the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint with a skin flap over the thumb. The carpometacarpal joint of the thumb is intact anatomically and there are movements also present at the carpometacarpal joint. We can classify this under the type 3 level amputation of the thumb which needs reconstruction. To jog our memory a bit, level 1 amputation is, a, is at the level of the terminal phalanx of the thumb, level 2 amputation is at the level of the neck of the proximal phalanx, level 3 at or about the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb, level 4 is at the level of the base of the first metacarpal with the intact carpometacarpal joint and level 5 amputation is through or proximal to the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. Having examined the patient and understood the problems that the patient is having, we now need to plan the management protocol. Like for any clinical case, we will do this by first analyzing the goals that have to be achieved, the options that are available for the management and finally selecting the ideal options and prioritizing the treatment. As far as this patient, with the amputated thumb is concerned, we have a few primary goals. We need to achieve and reconstruct a good working thumb and it must look like a thumb. But these are quite vague goals. We need to have certain objective criteria for thumb reconstruction and these we shall see now. We need to achieve and reconstruct a thumb that is of adequate length has good mobility of the joints, especially the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints, has good stability, looks like a thumb and has good cosmesis and importantly must have growth potential. This is not one of the classical criteria for thumb reconstruction but I feel it is also an important part of the reconstruction process. Having understood the reconstruction goals, we shall now see the different options that are available and how they are able to fulfill the criteria that we want to achieve. Basically, there are two types of techniques available for reconstruction of the thumb. The first is the non-microvascular method and the second is the microvascular method. The non-microvascular method consists of two techniques. The first is the conventional multi-staged osteoplastic reconstruction and the second is the single stage osteoplastic reconstruction. The microvascular technique basically consists of three main procedures. The vascularized second toe transfer, the vascularized wraparound great toe transfer and the vascularized trimmed toe transfer. Let us consider each of these techniques and see whether they are fulfilling the criteria of thumb reconstruction. First, we shall consider the conventional multi-staged osteoplastic reconstruction which consists of a reconstruction with a groin flap followed by an ulna bone graft and a neurovascular island flap for providing sensation. This will definitely provide the length but there will be no mobility at the interphalangeal joint as there will be a stiff bone graft there. Stability will be achieved but cosmesis will not be available because there will be a bulky thumb reconstructed and there will be no nail complex. This does not have growth capacity as there is no growing bone within the reconstructed thumb. The single stage osteoplastic reconstruction also consists of similar technique where two flaps are used. The first dorsal metacarpal artery flap or the posterior interosseous artery flap for the posterior aspect and littler's neurovascular island flap for the volar aspect and an ulna bone graft or an iliac bone graft to provide the length. Hence the length will be provided and since there is already mobility in the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb, only that will be available and no extra mobility will be provided either at the metacarpophalangeal joint or the interphalangeal joint. Stability will be there but cosmesis and growth capacity will not be there. We shall now consider the features of the second toe transfer. The length will be available because the entire second toe is going to be transferred to reconstruct the thumb. The mobility of the interphalangeal joint will be available along with the metacarpophalangeal joint mobility and 
The carpometacarpal joint mobility is already present as we are dealing with a type 3 amputation of the thumb at the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint. Stability will be present by bone to bone union at the level of the metacarpal bone and as far as cosmesis is concerned it is not as bad as the osteoplastic reconstruction but it is not as good as the wraparound toe transfer also. Growth capacity is definitely present as growing bone is present in the transferred toe. The wraparound great toe transfer is also a reconstruction method where length will be provided by a bone graft and the wrapping around with the kin and part of the nail complex from the great toe. Obviously, since a bone graft is involved, there will be no mobility at the interphalangeal joint. Stability will be provided and cosmesis will be excellent as the great toe skin and nail complex can be tailored to reconstruct a thumb which matches the size of the opposite thumb. Growth capacity will not be available since it involves a bone graft only. The final option would be a trimmed toe transfer where part of the big toe, a longitudinal section of the big toe is taken and this provides length, it provides mobility at the interphalangeal joints, it provides stability, it provides cosmesis and it provides growth capacity also but it has the biggest disadvantage that as a result of this procedure the great toe is either totally distorted or maimed. So while making the final plans for reconstruction of the thumb in this 12 year old boy we can shortlist and make two plans. Plan A would be microvascular second toe transfer to the thumb which can be harvested at the level of the metatarsal bone from the second toe or plan B which can be offered as a non-microvascular option if the patient is not willing for a microvascular transfer of the toe. This would be the multi-staged osteoplastic reconstruction. Among these two plans that we have shortlisted, the best plan would be the microvascular second toe transfer to the thumb because it is needed in a 12 year old child who needs to have a thumb that grows along with him. It is his dominant hand and he needs movement at the IP joint and finally he needs a fair amount of cosmesis to be able to use his hand comfortably. If microvascular surgical facility is available, it clinches this final plan. The planning is not complete without talking to the patient and the caregivers. First we need to talk to them about the plan that we have made. We have planned for a toe transfer. We need to tell them that we, we will be taking the second toe from the opposite foot here in this patient from the left foot and then we need to tell them that there will be a deficit in the foot in that there will be only four toes and by the loss of the second toe there is usually no deficit in either running, walking or playing. We need to tell them that this surgical procedure will take a total of about 8 hours maybe and there is a problem that it can fail and in that situation if recognized early an exploratory surgery will be mandated and will have to be performed. This exploratory surgery may be successful or not. We need to tell them that if it fails he will not only lose the reconstructed thumb he will also lose their toe that has already been harvested. We then need to tell them that there may be a need to take a skin graft from the thigh to cover any residual raw areas. About why this plan has been chosen we need to explain because we need to tell them that this is the best plan of reconstruction for this young boy who has got an amputation of the right thumb. We also need to tell them what are the advantages of this flap and the disadvantages of all the other plans that we have considered. If the patient or the caregiver is a little apprehensive about the plan that we have made, we need to discuss the other options also and give them the chance to select the option that they are most comfortable with. Whatever the plan that is chosen, we should not proceed further with any surgical procedure without convincing the patient and the primary caregivers. Even if the patient is convinced it is not enough, we need to convince the caregivers also. 
Once they are convinced about the plan that has been made, we need to talk to them about the anesthesia that will be required and the complications of anesthesia, but this would be better done by the anesthesiologists themselves when they go for the consultation. We need to then talk to them about the follow-up period and the need for therapy. This must be emphasized in the pre-surgical counseling period itself so that they understand that the surgery is not the end of the treatment and physiotherapy will be required. We need to stress upon the complications that can occur either early like flap necrosis or failure or raw areas which need a correction and also about the delayed complications like loss of movement which may need surgeries like tenolysis or mobilization procedures. Finally, we need to talk about the period of hospitalization and expenses and at this point we must stress that even the complications have a financial burden. Now the patient is ready for surgery. We need to streamline the steps at this juncture to ensure that the entire procedure is carried out smoothly. So now what we have to do is carry out these five important steps that is bedside planning, basic investigations, anesthetic consult, scheduling the surgery and finally admission and preparation. Now we shall see all these steps in detail. The first step would be a bedside planning which will consist of dopplering of the dorsal pedis and the radial arteries. Secondly, marking out the toe flap. This will entail the marking to be made on the foot for harvest of the toe. The next step is marking the incisions. The incision begins at the level of the palpation of the dorsal pedis artery, an S-shaped curve with a racket shaped incision over the toe, more on the dorsal aspect and lesser on the plantar aspect. More details of the intricate planning can be obtained by clicking the icon above and planning on the x-rays to find out how much of bone from the second toe should be harvested. The length of thumb required is 6.5 centimeters. The second toe transfer is ideal from the opposite foot. Hence an x-ray of the opposite foot is taken and the marked length from the hand x-ray is now transposed to the foot. So that would be the length of the skeleton required from the toe. Once the thorough planning has been done, basic investigations for anesthetic consult can be done and the anesthesiologist should be consulted since it is going to be a major procedure. The surgeon can discuss with the anesthesiologist about the best anesthesia for the patient. Once that is done, the scheduling of the surgery can be done at a convenient time for both the patient and most importantly the surgeon because it is going to involve long operating hours. Once the surgery has been scheduled, we need to fix the time in the operating theatre. We must take into account the amount of hours that will be required for the surgery and the possibility of re-exploration in case of any problem. We also need to inform the OT personnel, the staff nurse and the workers to be prepared for a long surgery. And thirdly, we need to get the equipment, the microscope, the surgical loops ready and the necessary micro instruments and sutures needed for surgery ready and depending on the schedule, the admission of the patient and preparation of the parts that is the left leg and foot for harvest of the toe, the right thigh for harvest of the skin graft if needed, preparation of the back for anesthesia and preparation of the right upper limb up to the axilla. At this point, the clinical consultations are over and patient is ready for the surgical procedure. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about the new series that have been added in our YouTube channel GK Hand Surgery. And do not forget to subscribe to keep connected with the latest in learning hand surgery. Manakkam.